Hi everybody, I'm Lance Porter. In this video I want to teach you a little bit about painting hair. I'm going to use this as an example. just want to show you a couple of things on the finished painting and then I'm going to cut to a, a demonstration. Um, when you're painting hair, one of the key things that you want to do, if you want to make the hair look great, is put in as many different colors into the hair as you possibly can. What a third grade kid would do when they paint hair is they'd say, well, this hair is maybe like a reddish orangey brown, and they'd pick a reddish orangey brown, and they'd paint all the hair that color. Well, it'd just be <laughs> terrible. It would really look bad. So what you want to do is the opposite of that. You really want to work in as many different shades of color as you possibly can. Now, the colors are not going to be wildly different. They all have to be colors that really could be or would be found in your subject's hair. But as many different small variations on shading, subtle distinctions as you can put in there, the more lifelike the hair will actually uh, appear to be. The other thing you have to do when you paint hair is you have to observe how the shadows and highlights fall in the hair. Now in this example, it's pretty clear cut. Uh, as you can see from the shadow on the nose, the light in this picture is coming from over here. So the model herself, her cheek, her throat, is throwing the darkest shadow on the hair just off the side of the contour of her cheek, underneath her chin, and just off the side of her neck. So that's the darkest shadow in here. That's going to be a pure burnt umber, which is a dark grayish brown. That's what I'm going to use to paint that. Then in the mass of her hair, it's basically middle tone, red hair. But then as it gets toward the edge of the uh, hair mass, we're getting some transillumination as well as direct illumination, and that's actually making the hair out here on the fringes of the hair look a little lighter than it really is. So it looks a little bit blondish out there, and I want to paint it that way. A couple other quick points. One of the goals that every portrait painter has when they paint hair is to make the edges of the hair, the fringes of the hair, these little wisps out here, particularly you can see it maybe here, just on, this is the mass of hair, but here it disappears into the background like smoke. That's your goal. That's what you should try to do with your hair at its edges. And it's a technique, it's called fumato, which is simply Italian for smoke. But to the greatest extent you possibly can, you want the edges of your hair not to end abruptly in a hard edge, but to simply disappear, to blend away into the background and disappear like smoke. Lastly, I guess it goes, that goes without saying, when you're painting the face, skin tones in general, it doesn't matter what direction you paint the paint on in because you're going to blend it out smooth, you're going to lose your brush strokes. You won't be able to see the brush strokes anymore so it doesn't matter what direction the brush strokes were painted in in the first place. But in hair, we want to give the impression of hair which flows in locks and waves. And so we are going to leave our brush strokes. We're going to do a little blending on the hair but not enough to lose our differentiation in color, not enough to lose the directional strokes of our, our brush. So, when we paint the hair, obviously, we need to paint the hair in the direction, consistently in the direction that the hair flows. I'm going to paint this demonstration using a half-inch flat brush. It's half-inch wide, but much narrower uh, from the side dimension. And the great advantage of this brush is, first of all, you can cover a fairly large amount of territory rapidly, which you want to do when you're painting hair. Secondly, you can get two different widths of stroke. You can use the flat side to get a pretty wide stroke. Then you can turn it sideways and get a narrower stroke, and that's what you want to do. In addition to varying the colors in the hair, you want to vary the width of your brush stroke. It gives you the impression of realistic hair. Let's cut to a close-up, and I'll paint some hair for you.